Hi everyone, welcome to Chalchitra Talks. I'm Vani and this is the 25th episode of the book recommendation series. So I have a guest with me today, his name is Srivat Snevatya and you might remember him from episode 4 where I recommended his How to Travel Light. So this week, Srivats is going to share five of his favorite reads with all of us. So over to Srivats for his book recommendations. I'm here to recommend five books and the ones I've chosen are books that intellectually of course have been very pleasurable but emotionally have got me a world of sustenance and uh, seeing me through times uh, good bad hard um, I ask you to do this or to do so at your own peril but if you are to take my recommendation seriously uh, then I would say that uh, I hope that they bring you as much joy and delight as they have brought me in these books. The first book I recommend is Commonwealth by Anne Patchett. I read the first chapter of Anne Patchett's Commonwealth and she immediately became one of my favorite writers. In that single chapter, as of course through the course of the book, she looks at life with such depth, the observation is so rich, she makes you feel, she makes you emote so much without ever pandering to sentimentality that the book is just wholly unputdownable. There are other books of Anne Patchett that you could read, Bel Canto, The Dutch House, um, but Commonwealth is one that remains very special just for the amount that I felt while reading it. Uh, and also the amount that I learned, of course, about writing, but also about living. The next book is a novel by Jeffrey Eugenides. It's called The Marriage Plot. The novel follows three characters. Uh, we see them in college and then we see them grow up a little. And it almost felt like Jeffrey Eugenides had taken me and divided me to three different characters. Uh, and so I felt that I was reading versions of my three selves kind of uh, interact, communicate, fall in love, fall out of it, and so on and so forth. Uh, it was an eerie experience and disconcerting to say the least, but also very, very hot. The prose is again exquisite. Uh, and I, I, I would ask you to read it to make sense of your growing up and perhaps to remind you that no matter how old you are, you kind of still are. With the next book, which is uh, J.M. Kadzia's Scenes from Provincial Life. I am cheating a little because this is not one book, but it's three books in one. The three books are uh, Boyhood and Youth and Summertime. And these are fictional memoirs where uh, Kadzia is taking his own life and fictionalizing it. So you're scratching your head, asking yourself questions like, where is Katya? Is he here? Is he elsewhere? You're asking, how does memory function? What is truth? And these are delightful questions to ask, as also sometimes difficult. But Katya makes you have a lot of fun while you're doing all of this, especially uh, with these three books. Uh, so Scenes from Provincial Life by J.M. Katya. And uh, then this, this, this other book I'm very fond of, uh, Sarah Bakewell's How to Live. A Life of Montaigne in One Question and 20 Attempts at an Answer. So the book and its title and its subtitle are just very, very, very playful, much like Montaigne's essays are. So uh, Michel de Montaigne was a French essayist and philosopher who took life very seriously. Yes, of course he did, like philosophers do. But he took it seriously so that he could find a way of making perhaps light of it, but also to lighten one's load. So uh, when when somebody says, you know, how to live, you, you think it's, it's, it's going to be a self-help book or something of the sort. It's not. It's just a biography of a really, really fun human being uh, and written in a really, really fun way. Uh, so, so yes, you, you should pick it up if you find it. And the last book is uh, Ka by Roberto Calasso. The book retells Hindu myths, uh, tales from Hindu scripture, uh, rituals of Hindu religion. A lot of these are things that we might know, but when Calasso writes about them, you would feel that 
you're reading these stories for the very first time. A history teacher had asked me to read it when I was 16, and I remember picking it up and not making any sense of it, but being astounded and asking myself a question which I ask myself even when I read Kalasu today, is that are you even allowed to write like that? Uh, he is that good. Uh, so yes, uh, please read Ka and also please subscribe to uh, Chalchitra Talkies where you would be able to get recommendations for not just books, but films, music, shows, and thank you uh, Chalchitra Talkies for this opportunity. It's been a world of fun.